My name is Robin Loza and I work at Monkey Proof Solutions in the Netherlands. We have a lot of experience in MATLAB and over the years we've worked on many different projects in various industries and these projects involve a lot of code sharing both between me and my colleagues but also with customers and this has shown us the importance of writing clean and understandable code which makes sharing and maintaining the code a lot easier and less time consuming and therefore today I want to talk about coding standards in MATLAB and how they can help you to write clean and understandable and consistent code. We've developed a tool for automatically checking your code against coding guidelines, coding standards, which will be demonstrated as well. And as Gareth already explained, the tool is built in MATLAB for MATLAB. So what are coding standards? Coding standards or coding conventions, sometimes also called guidelines. Uh, there are a list of guidelines for a specific programming language that makes recommendations on style, best practices, etc. And these can be about uh, white space, what statements to use, uh, uh, naming conventions, what functions to use or what functions not to use, how to use comments. Now, some standards can be a bit vague or uh, up to human judgment, such as uh, do not use or use meaningful names for your variables and functions. These are obviously very difficult to check. Uh, or measure. Uh, another example is that your code should be self-explanatory, so you shouldn't add comments to clarify your code, you should write clearer code. Again, these are difficult to check, but luckily there are many coding standards that are easier to check. For example, uh, the number of uh, characters on one line that you want to support, usually this is 80 or uh, 120, or uh, another coding standard could be to not use the return keyword or to not use globals. And these are obviously a lot easier to check. Now, coding standards mainly serve to improve the readability and the maintainability of your code. If you share your code with colleagues or with uh, customers or with people on the internet, they will have an easier time reading your code and understanding your code if you apply coding standards to it. And the other way around, uh, works as well. If your colleagues follow the same coding standards as you do, you will have an easier time reading their code and fixing their mistakes. A third benefit of uh, following co coding standards is that it will dissuade you from using dangerous constructs such as globals or evals or uh, perhaps shadowing built-in MATLAB, MATLAB functions which could lead to uh, uh, uncertainties. And as a fourth point, uh, I would like to point out that different targets may lead to different coding standards. Uh, as you can imagine, code that is must be used for generating code, C or C++ code, uh, must satisfy different and usually more stringent coding standards than code that is for regular local MATLAB use. Now, some IDEs such as Visual Studio Code can warn you about uh, violating coding standards for other languages. In MATLAB, we have the code analyzer. Uh, like you already said, Gareth, it only takes you so far, so we wanted a bit more than that. So for this reason, we've developed the code checker for MATLAB. Uh, yeah, that's what it does. It checks your code. It checks your MATLAB code. And the way it works is as follows. First, you select what code to check. This can be a file, multiple files, maybe a folder or even a MATLAB project. Then you select what checks to run. There's a mapping between uh, the checks of the code checker and your coding standards. Uh, yeah, you can configure your uh, you can configure the checks so that it reflects your coding standards accurately. And after that, you run the checks your code is analyzed and an HTML report is generated and you can use the report to improve your code and you can use these last two steps in an iterative process where you improve your code, see what violations are left until you're satisfied with your code. And in my opinion, using a tool uh, that checks your coding standards for you instead of having to memorize a coding standards PDF or uh, yeah, looking at it with your code it makes it a lot easier, less tedious and uh, less time consuming. 
of course, the code check from MATLAB does not check everything. We, we cannot really determine whether uh, your functions have meaningful names, but a lot of other things, there are over 70 checks, a lot of other things can be checked, luckily. Now, let's head, head over to MATLAB. Uh, as a first example, I'm computing the length of a traffic jam. <coughs> and as you can see, there are three numbers here, but there's really no context. There's no documentation. I can only guess what each of these numbers means. This is probably the number of cars, uh, distance between cars or length of car. So one of the coding standards uh, that is advised to, be, to apply is to not use these so-called magic numbers. So I've already fixed this by uh, defining each of these numbers as a variable first. So the number of cars, length of the car, and the interdistance. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Can, can you maybe just make your the font a little bit bigger? So I, I think uh, the on, on mobile phones it's a little bit tight to see some of our other ah. audience listening. So if you can maybe make your font a little bit bigger. Uh, Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, maybe I can share my other screen. Or you can go to the preferences in MATLAB. There's a font there, so I think you can change it oh, there. I didn't know. Let's see. Uh, display, I suppose. I think you should be looking at font. Ah, oh, fonts, yeah. If you make that number a bit bigger, life becomes better for everybody. There, there you go. go. All right. Yeah, thanks for the tip. Uh, and maybe how, how we I, can uh, work this out. While I've interrupted you, no worries about that. So while I've interrupted, there was a question that came here. Um, one of the attendees was asking, um, does this code checker kind of check for these white spaces? So I, I think Ton is referring to sometimes he sees MATLAB code and it annoys the living daylights out of him. Like after a comma, <laughs> some people leave a space and some people don't leave a space. Um, is that what you're talking about when you're talking about yeah, code? Yeah, among other things, yeah. Uh, you'll see some, some of that in my examples as well. Yeah. Um, cool. But in this example, I've... Uh, I'm looking at uh, magic numbers, so let's see what the code checker from MATLAB makes of this. I can use the start command to open the graphical user interface. And the first step, yeah, this may not be very visible on uh, mobile either, but cannot change it all that easily. Easily. Um, the first step is to select what file or folder or project to check. Well, let's just select one file. Then I, uh, I've already selected the file active in the editor, which is the one I want to check. And the next step is to use uh, choose a configuration file. For this, I will be using my magic numbers configuration file. It only runs the check on magic numbers uh, in this case. And then I'm good to go. I could also choose which priorities I would like to check. I can appoint a priority to each of the checks and uh, yeah, for now, I just want to run all checks. So let's go. Uh, there we go. The file is analyzed and the HTML report is generated. I'll just uh, zoom in a bit for those with uh, smaller screens. So the first uh, section is the metadata. We see that there are three violations in this file. I, I have some metadata on when it was checked, by whom, the settings that were used, uh, and a lot more information. Below that, we have the summary. It says which violations uh, occurred, which coding standards were violated. And in this case, obviously, there's only one that can be violated, and it's the check on magic numbers. It's got an, an identifier attached to it, and when I click it, I'm taken to the detailed description of this guideline uh, on these guideline violations. So apparently there are three violations. Well, there are three numbers that are uh, magic numbers. It says 250, 4.5, 4.43. And when I use one of these links, I'm taken to, uh, to my MATLAB code and I can change it, document it. Of course, I've already done this, so I uh, will be moving on to my next 
example, which is a bit more elaborate. In this case, I have a function file uh, with a local function. And as you can see, yeah, there's not enough white space here. It's difficult to read because there aren't spaces around my equal signs, etc. I'm sure some other things are going wrong. I've also used uh, yeah, inconsistent casing for my variables and my function. So let's uh, check out what the, Mat the code checker for MATLAB makes of this. I could also use the shortcut that is created when you install the tool. Now the first step again is to select what I want to check. It has updated the file for me and this time I'll be using a configuration file that has a bit more coding standards and a bit more checks uh, enabled. So we'll see some more results definitely. So let's run the checks again. And there we go. Now there are 14 violations across eight guidelines. Again, uh, some meta information is uh, can be seen here. There are three checks with priority mandatory that failed, so I should probably look into those. As a first step, I'll look at the summary. You can see some more results now. Apparently, I'm calling a function that isn't known. Uh, and as I already said, I already already predicted, I'm not using enough white space. Uh, but let's look at the first results. I'll follow this link to the detailed description. And here it says that at least one of the dependencies could not be attributed to a file or a function. In this case, that's the side B. This illustrates uh, the use of using consistent variable naming because apparently I thought side B would be spelled like side A, but just with a B. But I've used uh, this weird casing with an underscore in it. So let's fix that real quick. And I see that I've also didn't that I also didn't do this well. I can fix that immediately as well. Now when we head back to the report, we can go to the next coding standard and the next violations. Oof. VPN. Uh, <laughs> Not, not a problem, Robin. So, so while, while I have your attention, Robin, there's a question from Yodis, which is actually a nice thing to interject here. It seems that you're showing this in a very uh, user interface way. Is it possible to run this from like a command line um, so that you can maybe integrate it with, I don't know, Visual Studio Code or maybe even into your Git hooks in some shape or form or maybe even to a CI CD workflow? Can we kind of, uh, or is this aimed only as an interactive tool as you're doing it now? Well, we have multiple uh, license forms, but with the li right license, yeah, there is the, the command line interface. So can, you can use the start command uh, like so, where you say, I only want to look at the changed files. I want to even generate a possible output instead of an HTML report. And yeah, like this, you can select what you want to check. So there is a command line interface, yeah. Uh, but today I'll mostly be focusing on the, the user interface and using it interactively locally. Uh, let's head back to the report. The next coding standard is about surrounding operators with spaces. Not all operators are surrounded by spaces. And as, as I can see here, let me make this a bit wider. Uh, there are five violations. My equal signs, my exponent signs and my plus signs aren't all surrounded by spaces. Now I could use this fix all button here to fix all these violations at once, but in this case, I don't really need any spaces around my exponent operators. So in that case, I wouldn't want to fix this, but I also don't want the code checker from MATLAB to report it. Then we can uh, scroll down a bit to the configuration of the guideline of the coding standard. First, we have some general information on the priority or the categories of this check. And a bit further down, we have parameter information. Each of these checks can have uh, one or multiple parameters that can be configured to your liking. So in this case, I would like to use the operators, uh, the operators parameter, because yeah, 
I want to edit it so that I don't need any spaces around my exponent characters. So I open the configuration editor, which is uh, nicely made in AppDesigner. It opens the check that, that says that I should surround operators with spaces. And down here I can see that indeed the exponent character must be surrounded by spaces. So if I deselect this option uh, and leave all the other options selected, save my configuration file, I can rerun all checks on my file. Let's do that. And now I can see that there is also no longer the report of the of the unknown dependency because I renamed my variable. And also when I go to uh, the violations for the for this check, I can see that there are only three results left because the exponent character uh, no longer requires any spaces around them. And when I use fix all in this file, uh, the violations are automatically fixed. When I head back to my file, I can see that spaces were added except for the exponent characters. So we're getting there. So, so, so Robin, so, so, so this seems like another good place to ask you another question that came through. Uh, and I think this is important to uh, that Omar is asking the question of saying, can you run code checker to detect the missing semicolons, parentheses, etc., without running the code? So I think the underlying question is, do you run the MATLAB code when you push the code checker, or is this something that you're analyzing without ever executing the MATLAB code? That's part one of the question. And I think there's a hidden part here in the question is, what is the difference between what you're showing versus uh, what MathWorks ships with the code analyzer? Um, let's see, yeah, we, we do not run the code, so that's for starters, uh, that keeps it, things efficient as well, and uh, what we do differently, well, we don't only use uh, the raw text, we don't analyze that directly, uh, in some, for some checks we do, but for other checks we either use the code analyzer results or we use uh, some other undocumented uh, function for analyzing the code that is also used by MATLAB internally. So we definitely don't run the code. That's, uh, that's a thing. Very good, thank you. I hope that uh, that answers the question. And yeah, uh, we also have checks for missing semicolons and uh, missing parentheses here and there. So we'll be seeing some of that as well. So as I move on to the next coding standard, it says that commas, semicolons and keywords must be followed by a space unless they are at the end of a, of a line. So in this case, I didn't use a space after one of the commas. So I can uh, fix this manually or have the, have the report fix this for me. And now I see that it has been fixed. And the next coding standard is about aligning equal signs with a block of assign within a block of assignments. Uh, yeah, people th may think differently about this coding standard, but to me, it it's, it becomes more readable if your equal signs are aligned when they are. Uh, yeah, how should I say this? Contiguous statements. So in this case, I have two statements, and the equal signs are clearly not aligned properly. So for this, we have an auto fixer as well. And then it uh, yeah, automatically aligns the equal signs at the right indentation. The next violation uh, is about my variable names. Uh, the out variable, which is my output, should start, should be lower camel case, which means that it should start with a lowercase letter and each of the words within the variable name should start with a capital letter and in this case i didn't do it correctly so let's fix this as well now since we're uh, since we fixed a few things let me rerun the checks and see what violations remain now there are only three violations left let's see what they are uh, the first one says that user-defined functions must be lower camel case as well. I've used this uh, this weird casing here with an underscore, but also with 
a capital letter. Now let's say I'm content with this function name. I actually like this function name and I don't want to follow the guidelines here. I could add an exemption, click add exemption, and in a way similar to how you can suppress warnings uh, of the code analyzer, you can use this and maybe add a message. And then when I run the code checker for MATLAB again on this file, it sees this uh, exemption and it will no longer report it. Uh, that leaves us with just a few violations. I should add empty parentheses to function calls that have no input, input arguments. So in this case, it's not very clear whether this is a variable or a function. So I would like to add uh, missing parentheses. I can also do that automatically and now we can see that I've added the missing parenthesis I added the empty parentheses and now it's more clear that this is a function and not a variable and finally every if, if shall have an else section uh, my if doesn't have an else section and as you can see this illustrates the importance of uh, of using coding standards in the way that it also can be pre prevent dangerous constructs because in this case yeah, if side A is less than or equal to side B, out is not assigned and I will get an error. So let me fix that. Out is zero if side A is less than or equal to side B. And now I can rerun these checks. And we are down to zero violations. So I'm uh, very happy with my code right now. As for my next demo. So, so before you go to the next demo, there were lots of questions that came through this one, so this is good. So mm -hmm. one of the questions was, uh, can you check against different naming conventions? Um, yes, we can. Let me. Uh, yeah, so there are multiple configurations you can choose. There's a check for a variable casing and for this single check, I can use, uh, I can require snake casing or lower camel casing or upper camel casing or maybe even uh, a screaming snake casing. So there are multiple options there. And I can also choose whether I, I would like, like to allow numbers in my variable names or my function names or my class names, my package names. Uh, so that is highly configurable. As very far good. As I'm concerned. Very good. Yeah, that's clear. Nice. Any any other uh, questions? Yeah, at the moment? there's a couple of important ones before you go to your next demo. So sorry for stopping you here, but I think there the, this is important for everyone. Um, the, the question here is: Did you build your own MATLAB grammar to build this tool? Uh, no, not really. Uh, part of the checks we execute are based on the text file itself and. Part of it is based on what MLint does for us, the code analyzer. Part of it is what uh, uh, what mtree, an undocumented function, does for us. And we get a lot of information from that. So uh, no, we, we don't we didn't invent our own grammar for this. Uh, Very good. So, so it's, it feels like it's a combined of years of experience working with multiple customers and what people have been telling you and best practices and you yeah. as a Lab developers like okay so how do we standardize this and this is why you pull this tool together nice yeah. um there's another question which is um which is an interesting one which is can the code checker distinguish between unary and binary operators uh to a degree yeah we uh we i i, I suppose we do yeah yeah <laughs> uh it's always a best effort, so it, it may not be 100% waterproof, but uh, yeah, mostly we do. So, yeah. Very good. Okay. Please continue. Sorry for interrupting right. you. <laughs> no problem. These questions are important. Uh, next up is a demo on uh, coder compatibility. As I said before, different targets for your MATLAB code may result in different coding standards. And in this case, I would like to demonstrate that. So here I have a structure, the fields density and radius. This structure is entered as an input to my compute weight function, whatever it is. And after that, 
I'm adding a field to my structure. So in regular MATLAB code, this may not be a very good idea because the compute weight function may uh, assume that there is a shape field. But when you're generating code, this will likely result in an error because I didn't uh, define my entire struct before using it. And similarly, the bar function is perfectly fine within local MATLAB, but when you're trying to generate code, uh, this will probably fail. So let's see how the code checker from MATLAB can help us out here. I have used my uh, coder compatibility configuration file. The code checker from MATLAB already selected the right file for me. And let's see what, what violations I have. Four violations, let's see. It can report what functions I've called that aren't coder compatible. So it says that function bar is not coder compatible. Uh, so I'll have to find an alternative for that. I'm not sure uh, how I'm going to do that, but so let's move on to the to the next violation quickly. I can also see what functions, what built-in function I'm calling that are coder compatible, but that have limitations or notes in the documentation. So for the struct function that I'm calling, I can see that it's coder compatible, but, but with limitations or notes. So let's open the documentation. And when I head down to the code generation section, I can see these notes and it says that if the value argument is a cell array, all elements must have the same type. Well, that's the case in my case. So uh, again, I would like to add an exemption. I don't need the code checker to warn me about this again. And I can say uh, all values are uniform. The next violation says that the extract before function is coder compatible, but with limitations or notes. Again, I can open the, the, the documentation for this, head down a bit to the code generation section, and then says that the string and the pattern must be string scalar or a character vector or a cell array containing no more than one character vector. Well, let's see. Extract before. I think that's the case in my code. So I'll add an exemption for this as well. The inputs are scalar, right? And let's move down to the last violation. This is the one I discussed already as well. Not all fields are defined of my struct are defined in a single block of code before it's used because the field shape of the my settings struct is added later on. So for this, uh, well, let's just uh, move this down here. And now I've fixed my code. And let's rerun these checks. Oof! I have one violation remaining. Ah, that's the bar function. I'll have to uh, I'll have to find an alternative for that. So this shows how you can leverage the code checker from MATLAB to quickly check if your code is code compatible and yeah, quickly make it code compatible. Uh, but what if I didn't want to use this for code generation, but I want to check whether this code can run on slightly older MATLAB release, let's say 15a. Well, the code checker from MATLAB can support that as well. Uh, let's see what we can do with the configuration. Again, I'm uh, opening the configuration editor. Let's create a new configuration. I'll say uh, let's go. Oof. I think I chose an invalid name. That's better. <laughs> um, well, I don't want to check all that much. Let's uh, let's disable all checks first. And then I want to look at what MATLAB release I can check. Uh, let's see. Check if all used built-in functions were introduced before a specific MATLAB release. I select the check. I enable it. And I can configure 
for which MATLAB version I want my, my code to be checked. So I'll select 15A. So this will report any built-in functions that I'm calling that were introduced after 15A. Aside from this, um, I don't want to use the string data type either because that's introduced later on. Let's enable this check. No, well, I'm done with the configuration, so let's save it. And close. Now I'm ready to run again. The, the file is still selected. Let's see what violations I have. There are three violations. Let's see what they are. I'm calling the extract before function, which was introduced in 16b instead of uh, already available in 2015a. And I'm, I'm quickly taken to that location, so I'll have to figure something out for this if I want my code to run on 15a. Below that, I can see that the string data type is used several times, so I'll have to be using uh, quotes or character vectors for this as well. Uh, I believe we're uh, a bit shy on time, Gareth. Uh, That's right. I was about I was about done. There's just one thing I, I wanted to show before uh, the end of my demo. Uh, it's that we have the option to we have Git and SVN integration, so you could also select an entire folder and say I want to only check the changed files with respect to my repository, and uh, yeah, so that improves your your workflow. So if there are any questions, I would like to hear them, or maybe I could uh, answer them in the chat. I hope I've piqued your interest. So uh, if you want to try it out, you can head to our website for a trial, uh, and I'll answer any questions if there's time uh, again. With. So there's uh, three more questions. So um, I, I interrupted you a lot, so I'm going to give you a little bit more time. But I think <laughs> so there are three questions here. So Michael, bear with us before you present shortly. Um, so question number one actually comes from Yodis. I think he was impressed with the MATLAB compatibility on the different versions. And he's asking the question, is it also possible to check for functions not available without certain toolboxes or not available in certain MATLAB versions? Um, well, I'd say the, the latter is available. I think that's what I show, what I've shown, but maybe I'm uh, understanding incorrectly. Uh, uh, but the first part about the toolboxes, that's definitely on our uh, wish list. But uh, uh, yeah, that's not in the tool yet. So uh, that's not possible, unfortunately. Very good. Um, so then there's a, another question that came through, which is interesting is, uh, uh, say for example, I have my own standards, right, in my company. How would I reach out to you to see if they would merge and combine them? So I guess the question is, is there a unified body which your regular meetings where you can involve other standards so that you can continue to develop some of these configuration files which cross multiple countries slash industries? How would we reach out to you? Um, well, we are in the process of setting something like that up. Uh, you could al always, um, on our website, we have documentation on the coding standards that are currently, uh, are, that you are able to check. Uh, so that would be my answer. Very good. Um, and another question is, uh, it seems that you're using App Designer, if we identify this correctly. Um, yeah. So do you have any, uh, Maybe the way to phrase this, any experiences, concerns, war stories that you'd like to share with people who are thinking of going down the path of creating a user interface with App Designer? Um, well, there are definitely difficulties because uh, we support 17B and up until now, so there are definitely some limitations uh, we have to take into account. For example, the, the tooltips became available in what 19A, so before that, yeah, we, we cannot assign them as uh, actual properties. We have to write separate methods for that. A lot of that has been fixed in the meantime. Um, other difficulties. I, I believe testing could be a bit quicker. Uh, but other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with it, yeah. Very good then, Robert. So, so, especially if you're using the more recent MATLAB versions, uh, you'll be good to go.